Gusher. Hey, what's going on, you two? EXO coming at you here, just spending the day outside, working, chilling, spying on my cat, look at him over there, so dang cute, always my little partner in crime, I freaking love him. Another big hello to all the new people watching. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Today, we've got a good one again for you. Pulled all-nighters to film, edit, and finish this as fast as possible. To start where we left off last time, though, we need to go to that roof. So let's push play on another full-length build episode. <laughs> This is the first part of the two-piece roof that needs to go on next. Now, I just started sanding this large portion on the end because we need to abut it to the very end of that roof brace. Got to resume on this, get her done so we can fit her in. Kind of knocking back and forth, but we're gonna get it as close to these rungs as possible. Lay beads all the way in. Kind of a sandwich deal with this center rung with welds on both sides right there. This particular area is a little bit, you know, uh, iffy. It's thin, so we need to keep the temperature cool so it doesn't warp, blow through, you know, or at worst, maybe even bubble the paint. Good. Got smoke, a lot of smoke. It's just a little warm where the panel sealer is. Just spraying it, you can see the stock red hot. Yeah, she's nice and snug now. There's gonna be a couple more pieces that we're gonna add to all these to kind of make them all one piece. If we add little pieces like this, it will do that right here, 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 all the way down. It'll basically be what we've done on the sides, just mimicked on the top in a slightly different way. Two rows of two and a half. Two rows of two and a half. All right, so what we're doing is he's yelling at me. We need two rows of two and a half, which means three plus three, so that's six. And I'm just using the scraps, which we weren't able to use earlier. And then we take those pieces, freshly cut, and we wedge them into the roof, which essentially bridges all the gaps. Man, look at this horrible lighting. I'm sorry, guys. We're in a garage and we're working hard. Looks like a couple of these will do just the trick. We'll clamp them in. You can see what I'm talking about. They're in there, pretty good, welded up and down that seam on the top. The next pieces to finish are those missing tabs on the driver's side. Already removed the excess center portion, which leaves perfect little feet for the wood. Yes, I could have recycled the original cutouts, but of course I forgot all that at home, so I had to cut up a freshie. taking these pieces that we just cut and we're putting them in just like we did before but now we're obviously able to put them in without having to cut them out. <laughs> Oops. Permanent fixtures. It is now. I'm, it's coming home with me now. <laughs> oh, we, <ordered> the <laughs> <laughs> we got some casualties welded in the clamp. <laughs> oh, that's great. 
Oh, it's in there too. Yep. She's gonna, need a, she's gonna need a beating. <laughs> So now we are gonna focus on the squares. This is gonna seem like far ahead, but it will actually help us with the foaming. Because this roof needs to go on first, I wanna make sure I fill all those voids. So step by step, we're gonna use the pieces of wood that we add as platforms, spray some foam in steps so it expands, and we can just slowly go across the whole vehicle just like that. Otherwise, what would the foam be resting against? What would it be expanding on? Absolutely nothing. So this is what you gotta do. And this piece of wood that you're seeing is just temporary, don't get crazy now. But it will help us a lot. You'll see here in a second, everything's in it. You, you can explain it a million times and you never do a good enough job, so let's just watch, shall we? Sputtering. Come on, baby. Almost there. Take a look behind me guys, you can see that everything's going in real good. And while this great stuff dries a little bit, you kinda gotta work in phases. We're gonna go right to the front of the bottom floor because we don't have anything to worry about. We got a floor behind there. Nothing's gonna be falling through there now, is it? If we PL the high spots, fill in the low spots, it'll make a nice level plane for the wood to fit in. And then the top of the wood will be level with the top of the steel. So we'll use good old Loctite PL. And great stuff for now. I'm gonna use the more dense. Use the more dense stuff in other areas. This will work just fine for a little tiny gap this big.
like that, we're slowly working our way back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows in, and they are nice and flush against the top layer. I don't know how many times I have to say this, but another piece is going on top of this. It's gonna, it's not gonna look like this. It's gonna be one whole plane of wood in the end. You'll see it, it just takes some time. It looks so cool, doesn't it? Yes, indeed. good because there's two layers of tubing just let it naturally come out not bad and then there's the last row so we're gonna repeat this process again and again because we've gotten a good bit of it but I don't want to waste you guys this time by doing the same thing 10 million times in the same video Moving right along, and that is all the floor pieces inside the squares. Now you're kind of getting a better idea of how this is fitting together. It's actually pretty simple. These top pieces are coming out next. They're just acting as supports, so the expanding foam underneath it can do its job. So we can take it right off here so everything's nice and flush. Otherwise, it would have been like black. You would have had things sticking up all over the place because we've got some oozers and goozers. We're going to have to cut those flush, but all this is already flush. So let's take these planks out, show you what we're working with. Ah, see these come right out, put them right off to the side. I've been trying to save these screws. We may be able to use them again, but see what I'm saying? Perfectly flush. And I just take my little miracle blade, go in with some detail and have some fun flinging some slanging and it's actually pretty satisfying. I really like this part. I'm telling you, when you're doing a project like this, the name of the game is repetition. You end up doing the same thing over again hundreds of times. I like it though. nice and prepped, the next step was to beef up the factory sheet metal seams. Behind the cage, there's several joints without any sealer or filler, so I filled the cracks and gaps with expanding foam and waited for it to bubble over the edge. After a quick trim around the sides, I was left with a fully filled support brace. Plus, a little bit of construction adhesive always helps seal the deep. Did the 
same thing again and again until every single metal on metal area was reinforced. And since I had like half a tube left, I decided to fill in all the cracks in the floor as well. Well, we're making good progress, fellas, but unfortunately, something happened between the filming of this clip and the next step. Here I am trimming out more foam, about to start spraying the sides and the roof a ton more, but the clips are totally missing. Must have been a corrupt file, I'm not sure, but it's not all bad because my second SD card picked up just a little bit later. Fast forward a little bit and here we are 24 cans into the foaming procedure. I was trying out several different types, different brands, but ultimately decided on spray foam for the top 8 inches and then pour foam for the remaining distance to the floor. Just got a foam flush to the top square because the opening will be the access point when pouring the foam through. So with all that said, let's get foaming, shall we? I have been working so hard. My fingers, my knees, my legs, my whole body is sore. Oh man, it, it looks way worse than it is, but this is kind of the part of the process where it's going to look like this no matter what. Oh God, <laughs> take a look guys. I'll go ahead and run you through the madness. This is the foaming process and we've got some, we got some PL in between all the panels. The sealer that was there, as well as some extra sealant, all in there is expanding foam to fill up this little gusset area, and the rest of it is PLAX and PL Max. Floor all completely done. Every little crevice filled up with PL, and we've got the foam on the top. We got her trimmed out so we can stick in the next layer of wood. I'm trying out the Loctite versus the great stuff, and so far it's pretty even match. This stuff is more dense, but it doesn't stick to things as well. And this stuff can be more dense, but it, it, it's a little, little more inconsistent. You can see right here, looks different than right there. It's the same product, it's just that one had a piece of tape against it and the other one didn't. As you can see, it's, uh, it's coming together. It looks, you know, a little silly, but it's very strong. And this is all gonna be invisible stuff and it's just gonna be real, real solid in the end. Woo! All right, so this is probably like the hundredth application, but you can kind of get the gist of it. I'm really kicking myself in the butt. One of my SD cards was corrupt, which was the beginning parts of the top layer, and it's kind of slowly come down since then. But if you just repeat this same clip over and over again, you kind of get the idea of what it is. And it's, uh, it's many, many cans of great stuff. But once we get down to this spot, like we've been saying, we'll be able to do the pour foam, which is 10 times stronger. But we need to at least get past this point, because then we won't be able to pour. She's expanding all right. Now, 
I can already hear all the comments people laying into me because what they're looking at isn't what they're used to. So let me just reiterate one more time what exactly the method is behind all this madness. We got some on the roof, we got some madness on the side. So let me just visualize this for you real quick. The reason why we had to bring the foam all the way down to this point is because we're using two part activated pour style foam. We wouldn't be able to get all of these cavities filled up if we were to dam it up with the wood that needs to go on there. How could I possibly fit a cup and pour liquid behind that with a barrier? It would be impossible. So that's why we brought the expanding foam, the great stuff expanding foam down to this point and it is touching every barrier, including the sheet metal of the vehicle. So you can see we're down about eight inches right here. So let's go on the outside of the vehicle and knock on that eight inches. See, I'll do, I'll do a little comparison here between down here, this is all unfinished and this is almost finished. So let's give you a quick knock where the sealant is. See that? You can only get a little bit of reverb from the stuff coming down here. One more time, nice and solid. Now let's try down here. Ready for this? That's a big difference. See that right there? Expanding foam does a great job when you have a boundary such as a steel cage and the, the wooden squares that are going in it to act upon, to kind of expand against. And I did that same exact method with Little Blue, good old pollen filled Little Blue on top of the roof. Now. Don't do this at home if you don't have a, a base vehicle. But now I'm, I'm standing on Little Blue. Check this out, guys. Look at this. This is all expanding foam, 100%. I could jump on this roof. I can smash it. It is so, so solid. If you'd like to know how I did that, I have a whole build video on this as well. But I'm gonna be doing the same method we applied on Little Blue inside the behemoth build. There's not a single sheet of deadener on this roof, but yet it is completely dead. And the sound deadener begins inside the cabin for the vehicle, which starts at the B pillar. This is deadener. See, there's a difference. It has a little more, a little more resonance, doesn't it? Second skin, great stuff. So if you're one of the people who are wondering what on earth is taking place right now, I've never seen this kind of thing done before, well don't worry, sometimes you gotta do things slightly differently and the same thing goes for the roof. I'm gonna be trimming down all of these little high rise cake frosting looking bubbles and see how we have right here cut flush to that. This is all gonna be very flush right here and then I'm gonna use adhesive to go against that foam and then I'm gonna apply those squares that way because I was a little bit worried. The only reason why I'm doing it this way instead of putting the foam on top and then putting them in there, I was afraid that there wouldn't be enough air or oxygen for the foam to breathe once we finally get the, the last few squares in there because they're already sealed up over here, over here, I was kind of worried that there wouldn't be enough air for the foam to expand and harden because that would really stink. You put up those squares with the foam on it uh, beforehand and then it doesn't fully cure or you get those pockets of, of air where the, the foam doesn't expand. I wanted to avoid all that because you really do need to have good breathing room. So that's why I'm doing it this way, doing the foaming first and then cutting it flat and then using adhesive against that to use pressure against the roof and the steel cage. Nothing is gonna be moving. So what do you say? Let's wrap up today's video with a quick announcement of the comment winner from last week. We had some real honorable mentions and I asked a potentially dirty question that I didn't even realize it at the time. What's something that gets better and better the bigger that it gets and something that gets worse and worse the smaller that it gets. We had some funny answers, but this is always in great fun. Eric says shop vacs. That's kind of interesting. The bigger the shop vac, the better for him and subwoofers and free cases of beer. I can't argue with that, right? And it's a couple honorable mentions there as well as your budget. That's definitely something that gets better and better the bigger that it gets. So thanks for uh, answering these questions. All the people that chimed in with some really awesome uh, uh, answers and but this one took the cake for me. This one took the win. It is from Aaron King. He says, as my baby daughter gets bigger and bigger, every day gets better and better. That's pretty heartwarming, dude. 
But as my eldest daughter gets older and older, our time gets smaller and smaller, and that hurts my heart. Damn, man, that's some really meaningful stuff. EXO, you're my hero. A super real man. Wow, dude, that hit home. Thank you so much for kind words like that. You never know what this life gives you or how little time it gives you, so you definitely got to seize the moment and spend as much time with your loved ones and just cherish cherish time. So that is the comment winner, Aaron King. Send me over your shipping information and I will get you something cool from the EXO goodie bags. And you know what, dude? That just gave me a great idea for this video's comment challenge. What is something that you would do tomorrow if you were told today that you only had seven days left to live? How would you seize the moment? How would you grab life by the balls? Let's see if we have any interesting comments from our subscribers. And as always, thank you so much for subscribing. This whole build has been so fun. I love car audio so much, and it's awesome that we can infect the universe with this passion. Stay tuned for all sorts of awesome stuff coming your way. And always, thank you so much for checking out Showtime Electronics. I got a couple more things coming your way. Just wanted to post this video up. We're making some progress, so I will talk to you on the next one. This is EXO, signing out. Hey!